you know, if I was to pull up Gmail and type something in and send it over to you, Connor, that's kind of the, the style of which our emails look. We don't include really any links. We don't have a fancy signature to start. First thing, our goal is, is just to strike up a conversation. Are there any kind of variables that would change this? Things that you see people doing incorrectly? Like, are they using the wrong email service? Are they putting too many links in their emails? Like, are there any things that you can give as far as like tips and advice for the followers to increase that open rate that they're probably making these little mistakes causing it to not be opened, buried into the spam category? Yeah, don't put 15 links in your emails. That's uh, that's <laughs> tip number one. Um, there's a couple of things for consideration. So first of all, are we reaching out to warm prospects or cold prospects? I would say, if you're reaching out to cold prospects and they don't know you and you don't know them, assuming that you're in the B2B space, over 50%, I think is pretty good. If you can get 60 and 70%, I think that that would be great as well. And that's assuming that you're not really doing very targeted targeting. So that's kind of getting some data from a data source, whether it's a data source that you buy or whether it's, you know, scraping some prospects off the web and not really doing any research on them, but just kind of categorizing them into a certain niche and then reaching out to them. If you can get over 50% on that, you're going to be doing pretty good. If you're warm, you should be a bit higher if you're doing any type of like an actual outreach. Now, if you're doing B2C, like if you're a real estate agent and you're reaching out to homeowners directly, if you can be above 30 to 40% consistently for a long period of time, that's about as good as I've been able to get with my cold outreach for B2C. Are there certain times a day that you see that's better to email? You know, when you break down like your audience, some of you guys watching this may run like a fitness channel or like a comedy channel or something like that. People are going to watch you on the nights and the weekends or business channels they watch like early in the morning on Mondays, Tuesdays as the new work week starts. That Monday morning warrior mentality kicks in. So it's easier to get people to show up to mastermind calls and presentations and things like that for business earlier in the week than it is later. Is it morning, afternoon, evening? Do you find patterns where the email blasts, you have a higher open rate or a higher response rate when you're doing it? So when we send out an email campaign, and I recommend if you're doing cold outreach, uh, an initial goal should be to send out at least 1000 emails, cold emails per day. And when we send out our emails, we don't really do them in the form of a blast. It's kind of more like, you know, if I was to pull up Gmail and type something in and send it over to you, Connor, that's kind of the, the style of which our emails look. We don't include really any links. It's pretty rare that we include a link. We don't have a fancy signature to start. Uh, we'll put a nicer signature in there later, but the first thing our goal is, is just to strike up a conversation. You're going to want to make sure that all of your email is configured correctly, which is, you know, something that believe it or not, a lot of people don't do and don't necessarily know how to do. But if you don't have your email, you know, configured correctly, you don't have the proper domain settings, like you can really run into a lot of error for no reason. And you're shooting yourself in the foot. And then obviously email marketing is a very like evolving space. So what works today might not work six months from now, or there might be adjustments that you have to make to it. But one of the things that works extremely well right now is we do a lot of email rotation. So we'll buy one email, we'll buy one domain, and we'll actually put a bunch of subdomains on that domain. This is something that I haven't really heard anyone talk about, but I've personally tested it and it works extremely well. We'll buy one domain, we'll put 10 subdomains on it. So we'll put like MG dot domain mgb dot domain and the reason for that is because the reputation of your email sending is actually based on the domain and having a different subdomain adds some level of protection uh, which allows us to send a lot more volume from each domain that we do so just to kind of put this into the basic rundown we'll take one domain we'll put 10 subdomains on it and then each subdomain we will send we'll put three email account senders this is something that I've tested that's been working extremely well. And each email sender, so each email account, will send about 30 to 40 cold emails per day. When it comes to like addressing the email, lots of different psychologies and mentalities on you know youtube titles and click through rates and open rates is there anything specific are you using like emojis is there anything that you've noticed big numbers capitalization anything that they can use in their title line to have a higher open rate or is there anything they should definitely stay away from to not be using that's killing their open rate i think uh 
The subject li lines I use are very, are super simple. I would say that the subject line, it can help uh, with open rates and all that kind of stuff. Obviously open rates are not necessarily like the only thing that's important. Like the main thing that I'm looking for when I'm sending emails is gonna be, you know, replies, you know, just getting conversations started and whatnot. But one that always works is quick question. That's one that you'll hear if you're in the email marketing space, you'll hear everybody talk about that one. That one just straight up works. I do some personalization, so I'll do some tag replacements sometimes like I'll I'm kind of like gearing away from using their first name just because I don't think it really works anymore. Like way back in the day, if you would have like taken an email and you would have just automatically inserted their name and their job position, like they would have been like, whoa, that's crazy. And been like, more likely to respond because they would have thought it was personally to them, but yeah. everyone's kind of caught on to it. So I think a lot of the tricks and a lot of the gimmicks aren't working necessarily as much anymore. So as far as the subject line, keep it real simple. Uh, you don't want to do anything too clickbaity. Like you do want them to be interested and curious, but when they open it and they see your email, you don't want them to immediately become frustrated because it's something they weren't expecting. Because if that happens, then they're just gonna mark your email as spam and that's gonna hurt your deliverability really big time. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I'll say is when we're reaching out to prospects, a lot of times what we used to do is we would like try to drive them to a landing page or something like that. The thing that we like to do now is test a lot of different things and we like to test lead magnets. So we'll reach out to a prospect and we'll say, hey, you know, we created a case study that shows you how to do XYZ. It's been working for this person and this person. Would it be okay if I sent it over to you? And the reason why we do that is because we're not necessarily wanting to just shove things in their face, but we're wanting to instead start a conversation. Once they, you know, receive, once they reply back and they say, yeah, absolutely, that'd be great. That'd be very helpful. It's relevant and timely. Thank you for thinking of me. Then we send that over to them. We'll give it a few days. And then at that point, that's when we're going to make our first initial hit to try to go in and actually book some type of an appointment to work with them. And if they take it, fantastic. If they don't, then we're going to continue to send them more more valuable things and continue to nurture that relationship until they trust us enough to you know work with us